So good evening, everyone. Um, I just want to say thank God for your life and for your soul. We're going to pray and go forward with the information for tonight. I'm going to be um, speaking out of Second Kings 4, 8 through 37, and it's going to be um, about Elijah and the uh, Shunammite woman. So, Father, we just thank you for your presence. We thank you for your love and your mercy. And we thank you for your grace. We thank you for eyes that we haven't saw out of. Thank you for, yes, the transformation of our spiritual eyes coming into effect and the transformation of our spiritual ears coming into effect. We thank you that our whole mind, bodies, and spirit are transformed and renewed by you. Thank you for the beginning. Thank you for old cycles being broken. This is beyond our imaginable dreams. We thank you for the blood of Jesus, and we thank you for the healing power that you brought. We thank you for touching every family tonight that is present with um, interfaith wealth builders and those that are into connection through other vehicles. We thank you for no weapon ever formed against us shall prosper. Thank you for the challenges that you've given us, that you've given us the solutions to the challenges. We thank you for the power. Today and forevermore. Thank you, Dad. Nothing is too hard for you. All things are possible in you, Father. We give you praise. We give you adoration. We love you. We worship you. We adore you. For you are higher, lifted up. We thank you that you are the Alpha and Omega in our lives. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for redemption in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. And it is so. Amen. So the Shunammite, Elijah and the Shunammite woman. How you doing, Anora? Doing good, Evan. How are you? I'm doing good. All right. So I have to read this um, pretty much in order for us to get the whole picture. And... Um, <clears throat> It says, one day Elijah went on to Shunem where a wealthy woman lived who urged him to eat some food. So whenever he passed that way, he would turn in there to eat food. And she said to her husband, behold, now I know that this is a holy man of God who is continually passing our way. Let us make a small room on the roof with walls and put there for him a bed, a chair, and a table, and a lamp, so that whatever he comes to us, um, he can go in there. One day, he came there, and he turned into the chamber and rested there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, call the Shunammite. When he had called her, um, she stood before him, and he said to him, um, Say now to her, see you have taken all this trouble um, for us. You have taken all this trouble for us. What is to do to be done for you? Would you have a word spoken on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? And the, the, the place that I would want someone to bookmark is, would you have a word spoken on your behalf or the word spoken on your behalf? to the king or to the commander of the army. And we know that the king and the commander of the army is essentially God. So she answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, what then is to be done for her? Gehazi answered, well, she has no son and her husband is old. He said, call her. This is Elijah. And when he had called her, she stood in the doorway. And he said, at this season, about the next time, of the year, you shall embrace a son. And so he he's prophesying over her life, something that shall come to pass in another year. And she said, no, my Lord, O man of God, do not lie to your servant. But the woman conceived and she bore a son. So the prophet is speaking something over her life. 
Um, she did not ask for, but it was a heart desire. And that's the part, like, um, I was looking at people's desires today. Um, God has spoken things into their lives, even things that they didn't desire. And they're going through tests, trials, and tribulations due to the word because they have been given a word. And some some of the people believe in this word that they've given them. Uh, they've been given, but um, they start going through trials and tribulations because of the word or still believing the word. And it looks like God has lied. Right. And so my question to anyone that listens to the recording and that's on tonight would be to ask yourself if you were put in a dilemma as though of this woman, as we read on, what would you do? And so as we read on, the child had grown. That's in Second Kings um, 4 and 18. Um, he went out one day to his father among the reapers. And he said to his father, oh, my head, my head. The father said to his servant, carry him to his mother. And when he had lifted him and brought him to his mother, the child sat on her lap till noon, and then he died. So this is a child that the Lord has given this woman, and now it seems as though the child is being taken away. And as we go back into, like, verse 16, of um, Second Kings 4, you can see she says, No, my Lord, O man of God, do not lie to your servant concerning another year and a son will be born. Okay? So it was something her heart desired, but here the child has been stricken with something and he dies. And so imagine that mother or father grieving over something that they hadn't had, but it comes in, the gift comes in, and then it seems to be taken away. And so verse 21 says, and she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, because, you know, they had made a chamber for Elijah there at their house on the roof, and shut the door behind him um, and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, send me one of the servants, and one of the donkeys, that I may quickly go to the man of God and come back again. And he said, why will you go to him today? It is, it's neither new moon or Sabbath, you know? So there's no new moon and there's no new Sabbath. So he is kind of like thinking in the perspective that this is when you set your intentions and your desires, so why would you go to him now? But anyway, moving on, she said, all is well. Then she saddled the donkey, and she said to her servant, urge the animal um, on, do not slacken the pace for, for me unless I tell you, because she's riding with the servant. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When the man of God saw her coming, he said to Gehazi, look, there's the Shunammite. Um... Run at once to meet her and say to her, is all well with you? Is all well with your husband? Is all well with your child? See, he's asking three things. Um, and she answered, all is well. And when she came to the mountain to the man of God, she caught hold of his feet. And Gehazi came to push her away. But the man of God said, leave her alone, for she is in bitter distress. And the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. So I go back again and I asked, when you've been given a word, but it looks like your word is being taken away from you, what do you do? You know, how will you respond to God? And go on, you find that the prophet knows that she's in bitter distress, but God has even kept it from him what's happening. You see? So there's something miraculous to come to par here when a prophet cannot see, and it's only God that can bring something to pass to give you an understanding of a situation. Only God. In this here um, passage, 
it tells me that we have to depend on God because there are things that will be out of control or out of our control and even out of the man of God's control that only God can bring a resolution to, right? All right, so as we go further, um, then she said, did I ask for, um, did I ask my Lord for a son? You know, because she's going back now and she's saying, I, I didn't ask you for that. But in order for God to give you something, it's got to be in your heart because we're one with God. That means that God is within us. So my God communicates with your God and your God communicates with someone else's God. That's how it goes because it's a spirit. So she said, did I ask my Lord for a son? Did I not say not to deceive me? And um, he said to Gehazi, tie up your garment and take my staff in your hand and go. If you meet anyone, do not greet him. And if anyone greets you, do not reply. And lay my staff on the face of the child. Then the mother of the child said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. Gehazi went on ahead and laid his staff on the face of the child. But there was no sound or sign of life. Therefore, he returned to meet him meaning the prophet, the man of God, and told him the child has not awakened. So we go back again, and I look at, leave her alone, for she is bitter distress, and the Lord has hidden it from me. Then she said, did I ask my Lord for a son? Did I not say, do not deceive me? So it reminds me of Elijah's. Not Elijah, but um, Lazarus' resurrection. It reminds me of Jesus telling the disciples that he had to go and prepare a place for them, you know, because something has to happen in order for God's power and, and resurrection to come into our lives. And a lot of times we just see situations as the Shunammite woman is saying, I didn't ask for this child, and I asked you not to deceive me. Why would you bring this into my life and then take it away? You know, it's very important because a lot of people today are experiencing things. I do believe that God has given them a word on prophetically, and it looks like they're not going to have recompense or the resurrection power, but without faith. It's still, it's not, it's not pleasing to God. We cannot please God when our faith is being tested and we let go. Surely God brings things into our life that we didn't ask for. We, we, we're allowed to have trials and, and, and tests. We're, we, sometimes it's not even God that brings them into our lives. It's us and the choices that we make that bring some of the choices or the challenges that we have. But we're still able to call God into the experience and say, can you help a sister out now? I, you know, I made some wrong decisions. I asked you for forgiveness, you know, and I let go and I let God. The key is letting go and letting God, right? So when we look at the position of this woman, she says, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not let you leave me. So she's still holding on to the man of God, even though she feels deceived, you see. Um, so he arose, he followed her, Gehazi went on, he did lay the staff on the child's eye. And when Elijah came into the house, he saw the child lying there. So he went in and shut the door behind the two of them and prayed to the Lord. Then he went up and laid on the child, putting his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands. This is impartation. And as he stretched himself on him, the flesh of the child became warm. Then he got up again and walked once back and forth in the house and went up and stretched himself upon him again. The child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. Then he summoned Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite. So he called her, and when she came to him, 
He said, pick up your son. She came and fell at his feet, bowing to the ground. Then she picked up her son and went out. So the moral of the story is um, I was looking at reading um, Solomon 6. And Solomon was describing his love, you know, uh, love of this woman. But the Shunammite woman came up. And I remembered the Shunammite woman, in a sense, losing, seeming something. But in the end, she recovered what seemed to be lost. And, you know, the key to it is, is my connection with God for myself, your connection with God for yourself, how you really see things. And it's not lying to yourself because some things are not meant for us to recover. But if God is giving you a word, I believe, like this here, it may not happen overnight. Some of the stories that we get concerning, you know, biblical characters, they look like it happened instantly for them, but who knows the time or the day, right? So the positioning of this mother who did not have a child, she receives a child and then is taken away from her seemingly is a rendition to many of situations that we have all and people that we know are going through because there is seeming losses. But in the seeming losses, we're gaining something. We're gaining an understanding that God means all things for good. We're also gain, gaining an a, a understanding that we make choices that cause us challenges. And in this case, she had a course and purpose of challenges to go through with this, her and her husband, because there was a miracle to come out of the situation. So then we ask ourselves, how often are we given the opportunity to be a part of a miracle or play the part of a miracle, but we don't see it as a miracle from the beginning? We don't see it as a miracle because it just looks like a defeated situation. But then when we're called, and we call ourselves Christians, we know that we have to have the attitude of a victor. So my question would be, why do we settle for the attitude of defeat? Because there's a part in life that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is um, victory, there is life, there is abundance. So we look at this situation with the Shunammite, the Shunammite and her husband and her child and say, do I settle for defeat or do I take my victory? And my victory will be in my perception because even though naturally this child looked like one thing, she went, did not give up on the man of God to get them to come back to help make the word all is well, conducive to the situation. Um, I remember when Jesus, um, he was called to, I think it was Jairus, daughter had died, and um, or it looked like she had, and he was called there. He said, by your faith, he told him by her, his faith. And so the, the, the little girl began to, you know, resurrect. And so what we look at here in these instances is faith. The man of God can come. The woman of God can come. But it's still a matter of faith that gets us the blessing, the recovery, you know, the turnaround, the victory. And it's in whatever situation you're going through. One of the things that I do know about um, Christians today is, is that for some reason they don't want to go through anything. But that's not the God of Israel. The God of um, Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac, um, it, the stories tell us that they went through trials and tribulations. When we look at Moses, 
you know, Moses went through something. And um, in order for us to really understand the transformation of Christianity or from being a natural person and going back into our spirituality, then we have to work within the spirit realm, believing until there's nothing else to believe in. You know, sometimes you do, you put that situation on a shelf and you let God deal with it, but you don't, you know, take your mind out of a place where you just don't believe anymore or you don't believe in God. Some people, they go to churches or, and they've been hurt by church hurt. They won't go to another man or woman of God because of that or because they feel like, you know, in this case, they could have feel like the man of God let them down, but it's not within the power of the man of God because here it is. She said, he says, God did not allow him to see what was going on. So this all is power within God's hand, period. There was nothing the prophet could see. The prophet went to be used as a vessel, but he couldn't see anything because God had it totally under control. And that's what we have to remember is that man is only man of God being used. If God is not giving them the message, there's nothing that we can hold them accountable for. Some are in differences where they're um, not holding the title responsibly. But when we go to church, we have to realize that we're accountable for our relationship with God. The man of God is just a point of contact. Therefore, her consistent um, verbal narration of all is well got a victory as well. You understand what I'm saying? So when we look at this, we got to look at our perception. Um, we look at the perception and how we see our family. If we're going through challenges and we just believe that the challenge will never, ever end because here it is, you know, I got a family now. Some people don't have that and I'm just challenged. But if I could just turn it around and say, we're happy, we're happy. Eventually the happiness will come. And that's what this story is all about. I received something and then one day it begins to look like there's no life in it. So we could take the child out of it and just say, I received something that I desired. God gave me a gift, but one day it looked like the life had went away from it. You know, I felt like life was over for me, but I went to see the man of God and I kept holding on to faith. And eventually I saw the resurrection power in that thing again, but God had to do it. Amen. God had to bring it back. A lot of relationships are like that. People were in love one day, and then one day they were not. And it was simply because there was a change in chemistry. It doesn't mean that the life is over. It just means that we got to learn how to revive it together again, you see. And, and we have to be honest with ourselves. And then, you know, I feel like I should say this. So many people are worried about what's going on in the world or what's going on in their natural life that they don't sit down and take time to really see what's going on in the spirit. Amen. So if there's any questions, we can answer them. I sum it up as it's everything that we see naturally is not what we get spiritually. Our delays can be because we don't see what God is seeing. And until we see that there is life after death, until we that way, we're going to keep seeing death in situations. And that doesn't mean death in your family members. It could be in your finances. It could be in your health. It could be um, in your relationships. It could be death in your work. But death is only a sign that new life is coming. You see, here, there's so many things we could learn because we take the child out of it because child could be some a new fruition. And it took a turn for the worse. And now, you know, it's by faith that this woman is going to believe. And so everything has to do with life and death. Everything. There's a life and then there's a death. There's a birth and there's a death. 
Flowers grow and they die. You plant a seed and there's growth. In everything, there's a seed, there's a growth. But it is a season of death, meaning that even your skin sheds. There's death every year, right? So not to take it personal, but, but to get people to thinking about the responsibility of life. And sometimes we're not given life or we're having to go through situations because there's newness that's coming. And people give up too soon. They give up on stuff too soon. When you make up your mind that it's going to happen, especially if a word has been spoken over your life, it has no other choice but to show back up in the arena of where it first was spoken. And so, okay, here we go. Any questions? All right, no questions. So we're going to pray and then close up. So, Father, we just thank you for your word today, and we thank you for healings in families and households. We thank you for breaking strongholds and breaking cycles of generational curses. We thank you even for healing families. We thank you for uh, your movement, your life, the new beginnings. We thank you for your love and your mercy. We thank you for healing us all from the top of our heads to the bottom of our feet. We thank you for financial healing, new fruition in finances, houses, and cars. Thank you for breakthrough anointing. Thank you for um, the bridge that you've given people over troubled waters, that you illuminate eyes to see the truth in this season, what looked like it was dead or, or stolen or taken away is being recovered. We um, believe and we receive in Jesus' name. You said that you'll give us the years that the canker worm ate. In other words, you said that you would redeem your children. And so we thank you for the season of redemption. We thank you for the season of redemption, even in marriages, um, for our generations down to the ninth and the tenth. Um, generation right now, turn around. Thank you that they shall not live in lack or live without. Thank you that you blessed our hands to prosper. You made us the head and not the tail. Thank you for the new beginnings. Thank you that you cover everyone that is given to this here um, ministry in the name of Jesus. Those that have uh, signed up to become a part of it. Thank you for um, what you're adding to this here uh, ministry. Thank you for lifting up those that have been going through uh, hurtful and painful times, heal their wounds in the name of Jesus, help them to see clearly, Lord God, in this here time that they will see that you are the power that brings life and that their minds will be transformed in you. That, Lord, as you speak and declare a thing, that it shall be. That your word is not a lie. That anything that your word says, it shall come to pass. And so we believe and receive that by the blood of Jesus. We believe that no weapon formed against your word can prosper. That everything that your word says, it shall come to pass. And any word that you've spoken over our lives for good, it shall come to pass. We just denounce the power that would be in any kind of uh, prayers that have been prayed against us be bound and broken and the fire of God come against them in Jesus mighty name we thank you for the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and it adds no sorrow we thank you Lord for a brighter tomorrow thank you God for financial blessings and increase thank you for financial blessings and increase but we thank you for the peace for these families in the mighty name of Jesus thank you that the peace that passes all understanding touches their hearts and minds and that the people that have walked and they've sown and they've given and they have stood through the test of time shall see your resurrection power. We thank you for your glory. We thank you that your resurrection power, it is coming nigh unto us, just like the Shunammite woman went through, Lord God, but she continued to believe in you as her son seemed to be dead.
that the resurrection power came. And so that resurrection power is coming in each and every one of our lives in the areas that is needed in the name of Jesus. We thank you that you're touching families, you're touching the children, you're touching our communities, you're touching our cities and states by the blood of Jesus. No weapon ever formed against us shall prosper. Thank you that every tongue that has rose against us is being denied and it is being broken by the power of God. We thank you that you scatter our enemies. We thank you for the voice of the Lord. Thank you for the illumination of your eyesight and our eyesight and that we hear only what you instruct us to hear by the power and authority of Jesus Christ. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your glory. We adore you. We love you. We thank you, Lord God. We walk by your power and by your spirit. Thank you that the stranger and the voice of the stranger should not have any power over our lives. Thank you. Thank you. We give you adoration. We give you glory. We thank you for the families. We thank you for a new beginning. We thank you for shifts and turn around for the better. Thank you for the covering and protection that you put over the families. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for your justice coming, your justice, new creation, new beginnings, new abilities. Thank you for signs and wonders we didn't even ask for. Thank you. Thank you for the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob rising, rising in our lives and our circumstances. We come against the power of fear. We come against the spirit of jealousy, envy, and strife. We come against the spirit of lack tonight. We call forth prosperity. We call forth love, peace, and joy and happiness. What's done in heaven shall be done in earth. We thank you. Your kingdom come, Father. Your will be done. No other will but yours, almighty God. We stand on Christ the solid rock. You are our foundation. You are our help in a time of need. There's no other like you. We glorify you. Stir up your gift and be thou, be thou lifted up with your families tonight. Give them rest. Bring healing in families where these children have been sick in the name of Jesus. Heal parents that have lost loved ones and children in the mighty name of Jesus. We call you, Father, to even touch the political system in the mighty name of Jesus. Hear our prayer tonight, the political system. Let our families be covered by the blood of Jesus as our world begins to go through the shift and changes that's going to bring a rocking and shaking, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Cover our families, extend it out, Lord God, those that we are connected to, Lord God, let your protection be upon them, that no hurt, harm, or danger shall befall them. For you are the mighty and awesome God. We know by your power we live. We thank you as we lift you up tonight in the name of Jesus, that you are a mighty rock of salvation. Without you, there would be nothing. And so in these times and days, where there are changes that people cannot understand. We thank you that you give us your solace and your peace that passes all understanding. Thank you that we can tap into the spirit realm and see that you are the solution to the problem. Thank you that your anointing is with us. We draw nearer to you, almighty God. Release your angels upon your people tonight. Release them in their houses. Release them in every area of their life in the name of Jesus. We call on Archangel Michael and Gabriel, call you in to stand and the army of the Lord to fight for us. Those angels in the army of the Lord to come and fight for us and stand for us, be that battle axe and that protection that we need for the days to come. In Jesus' name, we believe and we receive you with all that there is. We thank you for providing for us. We thank you that we have food on the table in our refrigerator, that there's gas in our car, Lord God, that our bills are paid in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. We thank you and we praise you. Thank you. Thank you. You are a God of wonders. Yes, you are. You are a God of wonders. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God of wonders. Thank you. 
Thank you. You're a God of wonders. You're a bridge over troubled waters. You love us like no other. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We praise you. We bless you. We thank you. We love you. We magnify you. We glorify you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. When all the world is going crazy, Lord God, you've given us peace. You've given us love. You've given us joy. You've given us a new way of seeing things. You've even given us a new way of teaching. We thank you, God, for the teaching. We thank you for touching our hearts. We thank you for the transformation, oh, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you that we can come together collectively and praise your name, that there is no other God before you because you are El El Shaddai. You are El El Elon. Thank your Alpha and Omega. You're everything. You're everything. We love you and we praise you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank you for providing. Thank you for being a heart fixer. Thank you for being a mind regulator. Thank you that you destroy the yoke of the enemy. Thank you that our families are free. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for freedom to walk and to talk, freedom, freedom of perseverance to walk through and get the answers to the challenges because you are one with us. Thank you for the atonement at the cross. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you praise. And we lift up those that have been sick, and we ask you to bless them. Bless them. Bless that little girl, Lord God. Bring her out and give her a miracle. We thank you for constantly healing Miss Jean, and we thank you for anybody else that's been on the line or family members that are connected to our line, that, Lord God, you bless them and heal them, and you give them a new bill of health. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. You guys have a good night. Thank you. God bless you, too. That was a very powerful word. Amen. Tell me what.